Hey everybody, welcome back to Stardius. I hope you're having a sweet day today. Um, I've got this uh, trader here next to our ship and um, they're offering me spacesuits and energy rifles, which sounds really tempting to buy the rifles because we might need it soon, right? Um, but I just don't have a whole lot to trade. I was kind of hoping maybe we could sell a bunch of this copper because there's a lot there's a lot of copper I could get rid of. Um, so like I could do something like this and have maybe, I don't know, I guess 11,000, which is a pretty good chunk of change. And then I could afford at that point to buy, I guess, both energy rifles. But I don't know if it's worth doing that. You know, I just I just don't know. It seems, um, seems weird. I am gonna get one of these helmets though, because I think we have more suits than we have helmets. I don't know how that happens. I guess when you start the game, you have two suits and one helmet. So I guess that's probably how it, how it starts too. Um, but I can get a whole bunch of money stocked up and we can use this towards other stuff later, I think. So I'm gonna execute that trade. Now, something actually really interesting happened. I'll show you the footage on screen. Sometimes I'm playing and I'm kind of trying to, you know, just kind of prepare things and get things ready to go and whatever, but I'm not really ready to talk, I'm not really ready to like present the game, but I, I want to keep the, the you know video running just in case something happens. And so apparently when you go through a teleporter, there's a chance that the person that goes to the teleporter will be cloned. And that's what happened to Mech. Mech got cloned. And so the game actually will distinguish between the human and which one is the clone, uh, which is interesting. But um, like if I'm looking at the researchers right here too, if I click on Mech, we can see this one was the clone. The interesting part about this though is it says it, it got an exact copy, but the, the skills are going to be different. They're not the same, uh, which I found was actually quite interesting to me. So we now have two mechs. Um, there's regular mech, the normal mech, and then there is a clone of mech, which is, I think, pretty funny. Um, we also have our first cleaning bot, which is honestly has its hands full, metaphorically speaking, because there's just so much stuff to go around, so much stuff to, happening here. Um, there's just no way this little tiny bot can clean everything, but it's trying its best. Uh, I do have more bots queued up to be to be created, but cleaning skills at five right now. Now we just had this uh, storage capsule land. So we'll open this up and it looks like on the inside of that, we've got gears. That's interesting. Just just some regular old gears. That's cool. Um, research wise, I just went ahead and finished. Uh, well, that's robotics. We got that done. I wanted to show you what I finished. So I finished the stock market, which is over here somewhere. Economy uh, stock market is done, okay. And then here's Star Creds Mining. I've also got Star Creds Mining done. Then I went through and got scanning research done as well. So there's been a few things done since the last video. And I think that's okay. At least I, I planned on getting, you know, a little bit of progress in here so I can actually build some new things. It's not really that eventful. Um, we have arrived on the near a new planet called Masomira. If you take a look at the map here, it's just from there where we were. And I hopped over to Masomira. And um, so we've been mining some iron in there. It's, again, it's not nothing that you haven't seen already. It's uh, pretty much there. If I looked at what they have, they have everything. So cool. I'll just tell them to, I guess mine all is fine. Um, but they're, they're going to go ahead and just get the stuff. So I wanted to show you a few things, okay? So with the stock market, I might be curious on how that works in this. The stock market in this game is not about investing in companies like that, like the normal, you know, stock market you'd have it's more like trade in commodities so if i go to the wallet here there's a new button it's a stock market and we can get that and this will show us and when i initially saw this menu i thought oh my god Asimov's override that seems like a really cool name <laughs> but actually what this is is it's Asimov override and it's the price of what Asimov override costs over time. So you can see that the value is going up over time. So what you can see is the trends, what things are getting cheaper, what things are getting more expensive, etc. And you can trade directly from this interface. You're not actually buying things. Okay. You can trade directly from this interface. If you think, for example, cleaning bots are going to start going up, they're going to start being worth more. You can buy shares, I guess, in that commodity. 
Think of it like buying gold um, through an ETF or something, right? Or hell, you can just think of it like buying a cryptocurrency if you want to, whatever. Um, in any case, you buy it through this, and then uh, if your thesis is correct and it goes up, you can sell it later for a profit, or you just your, your value of your stuff just loses. And it's interesting what kinds of stuff is in here. Like cats are in here. <laughs> like stuff makes sense. Like uranium makes sense, and there's uh, organic turf is in here. But then there's also human. Humans are in here. Okay, apparently we're getting more valuable over time. And there's multiple different things. Coffee is going up a little bit, right? Copper and what, the, what that is. I have no idea if the player's actions in the world impacts the prices. So for example, if I mine just a whole bunch of iron and I hoard it, right? If I just dump a whole bunch of iron on the market, right? If I just sell a whole bunch of iron, Will the price of iron plummet to like 50 because of the supply? And at that point, can I just buy a whole bunch of this iron, you know, manipulate the market that way, buy a whole bunch of this and then never sell iron again, never mine it, never anything. And then as maybe as it becomes more scarce over time, iron is pretty common, so maybe not a good example, but as it becomes more scarce over time, I could just sell it at that point. You know, who knows? I have no idea. Uh, but that's what this is. That's what, how the stock market works. So we currently have 12,000 star creds and that's because the trader with the weapons that were over there, right? We went ahead and I sold them a bunch of copper. So I have a bunch of money. I can now use that if I want to, to invest in something. So let's just take a look and invest in something. I think sentry drones. I think I might buy a sentry drone like this. Um, up here. It was like 10,000, 64 days ago. It's been steadily dropping. There hasn't been a lot of war, but I think if we start getting some war, if we start getting in battles and stuff, uh, there's a chance that Century Drones could bounce, right? As the need goes on. But interesting thing is Century Drones is going down, but rifles are going up. So are people like arming themselves for a war ahead or something? Like it, it's, I wish I could find, uh, you know, like a way, right? I wish I could find, I guess, um, a way to tell why the trends are the way they are. Are they just random? Is there a way I can predict them or influence them in any way? Um, you know, I honestly don't know. So maybe we'll go after lithium, let's say. It's been kind of going up for a long time. Um, I think lithium is gonna become probably really valuable over time. And one of the things I could also do is to take a look at the tech tree. And if I go down to the terraforming, for example, this takes glass, microchips, optical fibers. Okay, nothing special there. Plant fibers, titanium plates, uh, glass microchips. You know, we can look at certain items in the future here. And we can see what is going to be more valuable. What's, what is there, what is it going to be? You know, what, what are people going to start using in, in future technologies? Um, and honestly, I don't see a whole lot of indication of what I could get into. Maybe uranium, but... I don't know. Uh, titanium plate microchips seem to be like in almost everything. So as things get more and more advanced, maybe microchips, the price of microchips will go up. I don't know. Uh, we can also make our own. So there's that. So anyway, I wish there was a way for me to somehow tell. And then uh, research wise, it looks to me that there is also stock trading here too. And unlocks the ability to trade in the stock market. So this one allows you to view it and then this one allows you to trade in it so i actually i can't buy anything yet i guess and then there's stock market insights oh wait uh unlocks extra details about the stock market instruments maybe this is how you can tell okay so we'll take a look at that because that um that might be strong might be a way to make some good money with that uh let's see our shuttle is exploring which means it brought back all the iron already so we probably have a ton of that let me just take a look. 854 iron. Guess got a bunch. Yep. Um, so what I'd like to do is we have a generalist coming in about 20 hours. And I'm hoping that they have, you know, some of the resources that I need. I'm adding another crafting station here. I'm gonna kind of do a little, you know, research hub sort of area here. It won't be it won't be completely lined up just because I want there to be like a path for them to walk in here. So there's gonna be a little bit of a stagger here, but I'm okay with that. Um and then I want to get my manufacturing area ready to go here. So um, there was a few walls that was jutting out through here. I've gotten rid of those. And I've also made the back wall here completely two layer. I'm going to do the same thing now with this area. In making sure that this is two layer. 
and part of me actually wants to go to the outside with this, but uh, I mean, it's obviously faster if I go to the inside, but I get, I get to keep more space if I go to the outside. Let me see. Is, this one's the last one and it goes like that. Okay. So if I want this to be actually, you know, lined up, so to speak, then I would go here with it. looks like, um, so why don't I just do this? And then that's going to create like that double, the double wall on this side as well. Okay. So we're just trying to protect my ass basically, literally like the back fin. I want to protect it. So this area, right? I want this to eventually be my manufacturing hub all throughout the back of this. And then this area is going to be a hub for teleporters. We're going to have essentially all around the outside here with a walkway in the middle through this, we're going to have teleporters. And um, so people can come through here. They'll maybe they'll be way over here and they can teleport into this to get to another location. And it's essentially we'll have every teleporter around the base connected to the central area. And so if people want to go from like say here to here, there won't be a teleporter sitting here that takes them directly here. They'll have to go this way and then they'll use another one to go that way. Um, but, and that, so that creates extra steps, but what it does is creates flexibility because they may want to go this way next time or that way next time. And so they'll be able to get to almost anywhere in the ship pretty, pretty fast. The other thing I'm going to do is that I can create a panic room near the teleporters. And so if we have a situation where I have, you know, panic room and I need people to report to a safe place, I can make the teleporter room a super safe location and then no matter where they are on the ship, they can really quickly get to that safe place. So this is also going to be our safe place. Um, so I'm going to get uh, a door and um, line it up there and probably another door lined up, uh, let's say right over on this side is fine. And then this wall is going to be uh, reinforced. I'm going to keep laying in reinforced walls throughout these. I think I would like to make sure that if my if my stuff is laid in like windows or whatever, right? That it's at least reinforced in this area because I want it to be safer. Um, and that also it needs to be making sure that the ground that it's sitting on is solid. In this case, not glass. So we're also going to do reinforced floors through here, there, there, and there. And that should be it. And then I guess reinforced floors here too. And then all the way through here too. So the safe room needs to have that. Safe room should also have some sort of survival stuff, mechanisms, etc. Um, so I might put a charging port in here uh, for any bots. I might put a refrigerator in here that has some food. Um, you know, I got, I'll, I'll be doing that kind of thing, right? Although we've seen already that just because you place stuff in here doesn't mean people will actually use it and eat it, right? And it looks to me like, you know, storage settings, hall priority, like, I don't know... I don't, I don't know why uh, I'm still trying to figure out why Trogdor died. <laughs> Are they actually going to use the food in here? I can't tell uh, because, well, actually, let's see what Taylor's doing. Taylor is going to grab the meal out of the fridge. There it is. Okay. So we can confirm that the food in the fridge is in fact accessible. Thank you for demonstrating that to me, Taylor. Appreciate it. Gosh, that cleaning bot is, is so much time on his hands. Where, where is my cleaning bot? Right. Okay. He's outside. Let's, um, let's get the cleaning bot to come in and do this room instead. Okay. Come on, cleaning bot. Come on over here. Android. What you doing? Can I, can I not control you? I can control you, right? Come on. No, it doesn't look like I can. I'm going to say I probably can't. So it just kind of wanders. I don't. I don't necessarily like the wandering that the cleaning bots doing, but, um, this is why I want to have a whole bunch of them. So I've got many different docks and I want to have a whole bunch of them so that we can get a lot of stuff, uh, yeah, done that way. Okay. Now you, I also told you that I did star creds mining, right? So in order to get this done, we need to install this upgrade into our ship computer. And unfortunately this takes three lithium, five microchips and two copper plates. What I'm hoping happens here is that this generalist will have microchips and I can buy them from him. But if he doesn't have him, then I also want to call a different trader if possible. And oh, I can only do one at a time. It might actually prove useful to have multiple uh, of these. 
So if I built a copy of this communicator and stuck that here, like, you know, your bridge, right? It's going to have a lot of different equipment and stuff. It might prove useful to have multiple communicators so that you can call multiple uh, of these guys at once. Unfortunately, this takes plastic. So again, another thing I'm hoping that this guy has, uh, I just want resources that I can use and um, plastic because we are out of plastic. Uh, let me just get repairs going here real quick. I'm not sure how that got damaged. Anything else damaged? That's damaged. Uh, anything else? There's damage there. And that looks like it's kind of it. I think I queued up all the repairs I need right there. And then down here, and then over here. And that's it. Um, so the um, plastic. That one's a bit more difficult because plastic is going to require me to get petroleum. Let's take a look at the research tree once again. If I come over here to the, whew, hey, how you doing? If I come over here to not advanced manufacturing, uh, it's liquid processing, which is what I'm researching now. So it takes a lot of power to do this, but it gets us this petroleum, a product of crude oil used in producing other resources like rubber and plastic. And we, you know, obviously need this to build a probe so that we can send it out and scan planets, which is I'm going to work on soon too. And then we also need it to, you know, create plastic and rubber. And then the refinery here is going to process crude oil and other liquid raw materials. So we, we need the, the refinery too. So like all these industrial things, right? They're not all going to fit here. And that's why, again, I want to have this zone over here. So let me just sort of lay this out um i'm gonna use i think a, i'm gonna pause it because i'm gonna lay out walls and we're gonna use walls that are reinforced because of the high temperature tolerances um this area is gonna be very prone to fires but i also i think would like to have some sort of specialized areas and i want to have more storage so i think the first thing i'll do actually no i don't want these storage units because they're kind of small compared to what they are Maybe we will plan out having larger storage because I believe there is an upgraded storage somewhere. Mm, I, I thought there was. Security controls, telescope, cryogenics, molecular, rearra molecular, molecular rearrangement. Might Maybe we can use that for getting plastic. I could have swore that there was a bigger... Processing efficiency, yeah, a bigger uh, storage, but I don't see it. I see the one for battery, but I don't see the one for manufacturing, unfortunately. So perhaps there isn't. Perhaps I simply need to just add more of those storage units. Okay, then. So we'll just go ahead and do that. And if, if there is another one, then, you know, we'll replace them later. It's fine. But uh, we'll take the storage units. And I think what I want for the storage units is kind of like, a, a, a wide area so we're gonna sort of have it be all the way around and um you know it, it's tough to know because I, I need it to be efficient right i need everything to be efficient so like without knowing where my machines are i don't necessarily know where my storages are but i guess if i choose a location for the storages then i can maybe more easily choose a location for the material the the stations so how about we try this we'll say that there is a storage here here and here and then we'll have manufacturing for a certain type of thing here and then we'll limit these storages to only that stuff uh then we'll add like a space one uh uh, uh and then uh, uh uh and then uh 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 like that uh then we'll have three storages here we'll do the same thing so that's kind of you know yeah, it's it's kind of there. Uh, we can do the same thing down here. We can add more manufacturing down here, more manufacturing down here. And then each of these areas are going to then have their own walls enclosing them with their own heat management, with like coolers and radiators, and then also their own floor vents. So if there's ever a fire, we can vent that individual section uh, right away. As it is right now, though, um, we just have these, uh, these storages in here. So that's kind of how I'll lay these out. I think to start... We'll go ahead and just leave the inner two just to sort of mark it. And if I really wanted to be a stickler about this, I suppose what I could do is um, try to line them up. 
Uh, not this one. I could try to line them up to where they are completely like in line. So like this one would be in line with this wall, which means this one needs to be in line with that wall. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, which I don't normally do that kind of thing, but here I am doing it for you now. Uh, let's just cancel that and then go into facilities and then go into storage units. Then we line it up at the top side with that wall all the way over like that. Right. So like that does kind of give me this, but if I do that, which I don't think that's a big deal. I was going to say it, I, it, does, it makes it to where I don't necessarily get them all lined up so I can put them in with each other. But if there's going to be walls between them anyway, it doesn't really matter. So we'll have these two storages put in the back here. And then, like I said, all of this manufacturing stuff here, I'm probably going to end up having three of these processors, like four of these furnaces, you know, two recyclers. Um, the radar will stay out here because it needs, I just think it looks better out here. Along with guns, we'll have some guns out this side. And then I think over on this side too, we're going to have a platform on this side right here that has some guns on it too and some you know lasers or protections in some way maybe shields etc uh so yeah it looks like we have more iron coming in as well on the shuttle and i would like to i think go ahead and stop the shuttle for now if i could so just maybe halt the expedition if possible are you done no nope, don't prepare for takeoff do not prepare for takeoff uh, scarecrow details abort. Yep. Okay. So they've, they brought in everything in. It looks pretty good. It looks like all we're getting is iron from this place. So I'm not really, uh, ex super excited about it. So we can go someplace else. So I was at this Masumira planet, which was uh, pretty cool. We've been to these two already. And now these three, we can go over to Omega Jenner. If I want to, um, we can go over to Palarapavi. I don't know if the color of these, like, is any indication of the kinds of materials they might have. This looks like it's got an atmosphere, which is pretty nice. Um, there's Herluga. Also looks like it's got some sort of an atmosphere to it. Um, that's interesting. I mean, maybe they all are going to look like that. Maybe that's not an atmosphere. They all kind of have this haze about them. So maybe that's, that's not how that works. But I'm going to tell this... Um, Tell my ship to travel there now and then we'll have somebody get up on the bridge controls and uh we'll we'll head out and we'll leave masamira behind so bye bye masamira uh so we need to find copper no we need to find lithium we need to find lithium and um i think we need to process more rock and get more silicon but honestly lithium is the big bottleneck at the moment so i'm working on getting that there should be a trader coming any second now onto the map from some direction. And I want to get him. I really, really hope he has stuff I need, man. Like I need, I need that bad. Um, it's like liquid processing isn't even all that valuable to me right now. Right? Because I don't have any petroleum anyway. So yeah, it's, that's a bad deal. And then we also are kind of researching at our peak means at the moment we don't have any anything in storage ultimately i think we're doing okay we're not short on food at all we actually have two individual like we have two beings making two different types of food right now so like as far as the beings go they are completely fine their moods are really good like we're taking good care of them so i have no complaints there taylor's making coffee so we have good water and everything I know the new Trogdor is, is, is happy. Groot is happy. Everybody's happy. Mech, Mavis, everybody's happy. Right. Um, so I don't, I don't see a problem with this beachhead. I want to see beautiful surroundings, use of toilet, slept in familiar bed, comfortable work spot, socialize with Raven. Um, nowhere to sleep is interesting. So it doesn't look like there's any advantage to having individual rooms. So, yeah, I mean, if that's the case, then this is not a, a good usage of space. Um, for the time being, I guess I'll go in and just say, you know, it's okay to have this this one section be like this, but um, I'm not in a hurry to get additional sections uh, set up in this way, right? So I'm gonna have auto close there, auto close there, and auto close there. And then those doors can go back to being normal. Um, there are vents in here that are sort of governing the heat. 
and then temperature is good and oxygen is good. Um, the other thing I'd like to do for manufacturing is I want to get it to where people can work this stuff. I want them to be able to operate this, not just drones. I don't know whether or not stuff like this, probably not necessary to do that. Um, but I think there's going to be manufacturing at some point, you know, conversions, processors, etc., things like this, where we do need somebody to man this. And um, it, I think it's good to have this be a place where people can breathe and it's warm enough so that they can um, they can manage that stuff. And copper wire is just nowhere to be found. Is it really off? Do I not have copper wire at all selected here? I've got it right there. There's no transistors. And then also, yeah, you've been making copper wire here, okay. Um, I don't believe I can make well, once we have transistors, then I can make microchips. So let's start making microchips, because I think if I can get transistors going, then microchips will be there. Since I have silicon now, I got a whole bunch of it now, 157. Beautiful. Did the uh, the guy looking to trade with me, is he gone? Do you actually have to stay put in order for a trader to show up? I mean, I know that he, his beacon got the signal. Okay, there, good. So he, he does show up eventually. Um, I, I just figured like he'd be able to meet up with me in space. It's all relative and he could just like ride alongside me and trade. It's teleporting, right? It's not like we have to dock. So anyway, um, what do you have? This compression upgrade seems super nice. This allows my storage to go further by compressing data. Um, and I, I really think buying all of these would be in my best interest, um, just to get extra disk space for no resources. So I'm going to confirm that just for now. And then, um, I want to see if there's anything else I can do here. Glass, energy rifle, coal, soil, uh, water, spacesuit, soy burger, titanium. Maybe get some protein, I guess. Uh, quartz. Nah, like, none of the stuff is... I guess I could buy oil, but it's quite expensive. Um, I kind of don't want to buy oil. I can't really work with it yet anyway. Although I'm about to, I'm about to be able to here. Yeah, because of this, I'll, I'll be able to work with it right away. So perhaps that's the best way call here. If I buy a bunch of oil, oh my God, that's, that's a lot of oil. He has a ton of oil. If I buy a little bit of oil, <laughs> um, then I can start processing it into plastic right away. And then I can get my solar panels up and start working with it. So why don't we uh, maybe buy on like 30, let's buy 30 units of oil, which is 4,200, which is a lot of money. Um, we can add to our offer in addition to our money, we have 12,000, so I could just straight up buy this, but I think I might take the opportunity here to sell just a little bit more copper and notice how the copper plate is worth a little bit more than the copper. So I could sell him copper plate instead of the copper. And then we just process that copper, which is probably fine. So let's say 70 of this. And um, now it's basically an even trade. I get my disc compression stuff, which is good. We're going to install that stuff right away. Um, and then maybe I can also send him a little bit of iron if he'll take it, which so far it doesn't look like these guys ever turn down resources. So I can also give you like a little bit of iron. Like it's not much, but it's something, right? So let's execute that trade that comes in right here. And, um, this is done now. Liquid processing is done so we can get the refinery. And, um, I think the refinery is what, of course we need to create the petroleum that we'll need to have. So right here is the refinery and um, we're going to want to put this somewhere. And um, I guess for now, I'm going to put it out on this dock. Then we'll uh, examine the resources required for this after we get there. Copper plate should be easy to get. Carbon's easy to get. Glass and steel plate, all easy to get. Uh, construction level six is something we have. So they should be able to make this refinery. Thankfully, you don't need plastic to make it, which is uh, good job, devs. We don't get soft flock that way. I do, however, need uh, some resources that I don't have to make this. And it's really just a microchip. Oh, good. This is a radar. I think I said that already, right? Did I, did I show you that already? I got scanning research. Okay, so... You go over to the right side and you get uh, scanning after communications that gives you the radar. It's at that point, then you can get the telescope. 
And then the telescope allows you to find potentially habitable planets that you can try to terraform into a new home for the colony. And so uh, this is the ultimate goal is to get to a planet, terraform it, and, and that's how you win. And so we want to find that habitable world. And um, so telescope is a natural succession to scanning. Um, but of course, we have to be ready for anything. And um, I'll admit, I'm a little bit concerned about our lack of defendability right now. We don't have anything for guns. If there's any type of raids or people, you know, pirates in this in space, you know, everyone's concerned about space pirates. <laughs> I don't know if we're all concerned about it, but we damn well should be. Um, security controls manages all your security related devices from one convenient place must be on the same grid security devices and the ship computer to work. Yeah. So, um, that's something else that can go in the bridge, right? Uh, where is, I was looking for something else too. Uh, we have our own stasis array. Uh, will be necessary for intergalactic flight to prevent your crew from aging. Ah, I see. So we need our own cryogenics, our own stasis array. See that? So you can build a stasis array, and then when you go really long distances with the more advanced engines, you actually got to go back in cryo. Put everybody back in stasis. And then you travel really long distances. That's that's pretty cool, actually. Um, so I don't really want telescope yet. I think um, we don't need cloning because we just have them teleport everywhere. <laughs> Eventually it'll happen. Auto connect upgrade is not really a super big deal to me. I think energy storage is probably a big thing. Um, let's do, I really want to make my own robots to be honest. Uh, probe isn't necessary. I'm going to go with advanced propulsion. I think we're only 25% into it. I just need more, more Ram to get that Travel kind of across different systems. Like, I don't know what research is the best research to have, you know? Maybe I'll just go security. It's a lot of power, though. I'm, I'm concerned about the power for that. Uh, all right. Tell you what. We can do cabinets, uh, captain's chair, cloning, auto kitchen. None of this stuff really appeals to me other than maybe the stock trading. I guess I'll do that, and then maybe we can do telescope after that. I think maybe the telescope comes after stock trading. So 300 kilowatts of power consuming and you can see our battery reserve starting to drop slightly because of that. But at least I gave this thing time to fill up. No, I didn't. No, I didn't give this thing time to fill batteries at all. So we're going to have a hard time doing that. Maybe can I, can I pause this from, I guess I got to do this, right? Can I, oh, I can't pause it at all. Yeah, you, you can't do that. All right. Well, eventually we'll just have no battery and then we'll just be on solar only. So that's fine. Um, I also want to go into this mode too. Um, I see this tool and it gives me like colors and you can plan out stuff using the colors. So we have these two things. If I want to plan walls, but I don't want to build them yet. What I could do is say type one and I could say, okay, I want to make a room and that room is going to be, you know, here, let's say. So then maybe I do two rooms. I'll say that there's, those rooms are separated by a wall that goes maybe here, right? So there is a planning tool is what I'm getting at. Um, we're going to go ahead and have this tool be kind of like this. And then what will happen is the manufacturing will happen here. They will leave, go in storage, grab what they want and go right back in. Okay. Um, we'll then also have a, uh, uh, is there a way for me to, uh, plan eraser? I guess I have to go to a specific eraser tool. Uh, but I'd like to get something like that, right? And then on this side, the same thing happens, except it's on that side, right? And then we have, of course, the plant eraser tool, and we just go like that. So there's two separate manufacturing areas. They're not necessarily the same size. It looks like this one is one by six. This one is one by five. So they're not lined up exactly. But I'm looking at this seems to me this one should go down one. So what I could do instead is take the planning tool and let's have it come down a little bit like that. Nope. Uh, like that. And then I need to erase this. This plan needs work done. The game seriously needs to strongly consider allowing a right click drag to undo a right click drag to erase would be so convenient for this game. 
because having to switch tools to, to erase things is, to be honest, not that sophisticated. I wish it was a little bit more uh, intelligent in terms of how I want to do it. Um, so this gives me what one by six there. Yep. And then also one by six in this room. So now the rooms are the same size and we'll just go in and, uh, we'll say that you go in from that side and you go in from that side. So there's two entrances and they're there. So in order to have that work out, um, what I need to do is have you relocated to there and it's already done. So there we go. So we have two manufacturing rooms here. We'll have a hallway followed by, uh, and to be honest, this actually might not be big enough because this is where my, my safety or my, my teleporter room and stuff is. So maybe, um, maybe the room extends this far out and then it could be just a little bit bigger on the manufacturing front. Right? So it goes a little bit like, uh, like this. Now we have bigger rooms. I think that'll work. So those are my first two rooms. Um, we can have things like refinery, not refinery. Um, we can do the, uh, the furnace could be in one of these rooms and we could also have the grinder and stuff be over here. And now you might be wondering, well, if you're going to do all that stuff over in that other area, right? Where is, I gotta get off the planning tool. Um, if you're going to do that, where's your shuttle going to go? And the answer quite frankly is. The shuttle will most likely just land right in the centerpiece here. Um, or I'll have another dock for that shuttle that's close by and kind of centrally located. Um, but I think I was going to actually put the shuttle right in the middle here. So the teleporters would be around the outside and then the shuttle would land in the middle. And that way all their stuff just goes to their respective storages wherever they need to go. And then each of these storages would be specific to a certain type of product, which is then going to, uh, or a series of products that are I don't know, materials, whatever you want to call them that are going to end up in there. Right. So I think that's how we'll, uh, we'll play that out. So this is our refinery, right? Crude oil is in there and now we're getting that processing crude oil. I assume that this is going to create petroleum. I'm just assuming that that's what we're going to end up getting out of this. And, uh, you can see it various different colors, but again, it's all outside and it's, there's no oxygen. So the temperature is actually not as cold near the ship. It, there is a, a change in temperature here, actually. There's enough machines here to kind of make it a little bit warmer, but, uh, and then finally we have the radar. And there we go. So radar is available. And now just like that, there's an incoming meteoroid shower. This is a state of emergency. Oh no, a meteoroid shower. The hell am I going to do with a meteoroid shower? Um, I mean, sure, state of emergency. I don't know what I'm supposed to do about it. I have, uh, I've got double layer walls everywhere, so I guess we're just gonna deal with it. Is it, do I get to see where the meteoroids are? Can I adjust course? Can I, if I do a state of emergency, is there anything I can do to, yeah, can I do anything with that, I guess? If you're operating the device, and like, are you going to take evasive maneuvers? Can I, can I see a description of what this is? What about, um, I guess there's really nothing in here. Operations manual. You could go to maybe environment, space travel. I think maybe environment. No. Um, anyway, I don't see any, anything in here related so far anyway to disasters. So the only information I have is there's meteorites coming. It's a state of emergency. So if there's a way to avoid getting hit by these things, I would love to know what it is. But for now, so far, I don't see any threats. You would think if there was a meteorite coming, okay, we've avoided the meteorite shower. You would think if there was, if they were coming, I would be able to see them. But maybe because we are accelerating, uh, we've managed to just kind of get through it, I guess. I don't know if it's really that simple, but let's hope that it is. Yeah. Um, we're going to go in, get our... Whoops, not there. Not like that. Um, get our walls put in. Come on now. Come on now. 
Yeah, get our walls put in like that, 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 that. Um, probably put a door there actually. And then a door goes there as well. Uh, and then we'll just have a door go like so. You want many doors going through here just so they can get in and out of different positions later. Uh, so over here and this side, I guess what we'll do is we will look at, uh, I guess, reinforced walls. Like I said before, we're going to go ahead and lay these in. They're already drawn out. So we'll just go ahead and follow our planning lines and draw those in. And then we can go in and place doors there, 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 and there. And then um, I think what we'll probably do once this wall is built, we can go in and place a um, a couple of vents through here just to allow that stuff to kind of move out. Uh, on the floors, I want to have floor vents. And I don't know where the machines are going to be yet, so I kind of want to see where that is. Um, but we're going to place floor vents, multiple floor vents, one on this side, one on this side, on both of these uh, on both of these rooms, and then we'll be able to individually control those and vent the room. I want floor vents throughout all the different rooms in this place so that when I do the panic room and send everybody in, in I can then have basically force raiders to always stay in their suits. If they're in, if they're here, they have to be in their suits because otherwise there won't be any oxygen for them. I mean, I assume that that's something that will happen anyway, that they'll come in on suits, but maybe they don't. And if they don't, then I can suffocate them by not having, um, any oxygen in the room while always having oxygen and heat in this room because it's my panic room so um on that note we're going to want to have our separate oxygen pump in this room uh running so we'll put that in the corner over here uh we're also going to want to have a heater in this room probably good to have a large one and uh i can go ahead and place that i think in the corner maybe next to the door or something like, i don't want it to be in the way of anything so how about we place it I'll place it in the bottom down here. That's fine. Um, and we'll probably have our probably have our teleporters go around this outside edge here. Uh, and then again, the shuttle is going to end up being here. It will park right here, and then all the shuttles go from there instead of being here. And then we transform this area into another living quarters as we go. Okay. All right. So I'm I'm doing a lot of talking. I realize that we're trying to, you know, get everything moving here. Um, trying to. Trying to make it happen as fast as I can. Uh, the time is moving quite quickly. I have things in max speed a lot today, um, but it's just because I don't have any resources, right? Like I'm missing over here for the solar panels. I'm missing plastic and glass. So I, I have to create plastic. And I'm thinking we probably have petroleum now. I'm hoping we do anyway. Again, a search bar and this would be really nice to have. Petroleum, petroleum. I don't have petroleum. I'm not seeing petroleum. I am. I do have my my disc compression uh, stuff here, though. So I would like to say, I would love to have the whole stockpile. Hall to storage unit is fine, but I'd like to just. Can I highlight all of them? Multiple of two. Uh, disc compression upgrades. I'd like to highlight all of them, but I can't. So um, we'll just go one at a time. We'll bring them into this room over here. So as soon as they grab, you know, one of these disc compression things, I can, I guess, just scrub through them. Uh, it doesn't look like, yep, there it goes. Maybe they're taking the whole stack. Maybe that's how that works. There should be five of them here. I bought five of them. Yeah, stockpile five. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go into one of these disc modules. Let's say there's 24 Zeta bytes. If I add the compression upgrade here, then what I end up getting out of this, I think, is is more than 24, I think. Now it's 36. So I get 36 on that one. Uh, so I can do the same thing for these other ones. I can say, hey, install disk compression, install disk compression, install disk compression, etc. And I can keep doing that. And then I just simply get more data by having uh, these upgrades installed, right? So I'll just remember that all the upgrades are in the center ones. And then, you know, I can also make these. And then once I make enough of these, I can just stack them in and it will it will stack to compress it even more if I need to. But I just got a whole bunch of storage for that. I'm at 588 now on my limits. 
uh, which is pretty good. I think probably want to prep another RAM upgrade. I have just not enough to, to do what I want to do later. So I'll prep um, one more RAM to get to 18. Uh, this will be 19, 20. I'm going to need a memory area too. I think maybe I'll use this area for memory. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably re redo all these and bring them over here and use these for memory. So we'll have disk over here, memory over here, and then for CPU, uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll uh, put the CPUs along the wall or something over here. Maybe we'll stack them on the outside of this wall around it. Something like that. I don't know. Obviously, we need to get the crypto mining thing because that's going to give us money on an ongoing basis. And then uh, we're almost to Omega Jenner. That was pretty far away, so it's taking us a little longer than usual to get there. If I had more engines, then it would probably work better. Uh, so let's take and move some of these things. Um, if I moved the furnace, right now you're just processing me uh, iron ore. So if I moved my furnace, let's say here, put one on this side, one on this side. Let's say I went and did that, right? Um, you know, they're going to pick that up now and carry it off to over here. And I put another furnace, let's say there, if I did that, would I be able to go in and place on the floor, uh, a floor vent, I guess I'd have to put it like right here, right? So I can put two floor vents like right here. And that would allow me to, of course, vent this whole area when I need to. It looks to me like I also should have some connection points in here. So we're going to go to walls. We're going to go to a darker vent. We'll place uh, one vent in the middle of these two rooms. And then we're also going to place one of these wall sockets um, probably here next to it. And this will allow us to connect everything. I then need to move this unit out of there, but um, you know we're gonna slow start getting this. I think also a good idea, in addition to these two, we should have on this tile and this tile, we should have lights. And so we'll also do lit floors and we'll say these are the two floors or these are the two uh, vents. So we'll do light, light, and then we'll see what happens there. And we'll just kind of expand this as we build so we don't build anything we don't necessarily need. So we'll only add them like sort of like purpose driven additions here. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Now I want this to connect there and then you are going to connect to all of this. You're going to connect to there, there, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. We're not going to connect to this yet because it's not vented. It's not you know, we're not ventilating this yet. And so it's going to get very hot in here. We don't want to do that. I also want to have radiators in this room as well, uh, just to help it cool down. Probably a very good idea to do that too. So we'll have some lights going on in here though, at least. There we go. It's a very lit room now. Lovely. In this storage, I want to have things that work well for furnaces. So copper ore can go here. And um, I don't know, uh, iron can go here. I'm not sure what else these these things will process. I know that this list is very long and it's kind of going off the screen and I wish it wouldn't go off the screen because I don't know how else to... Um, one thing I think this game really needs, it would be very helpful if this game had uh, like scroll bars like it, like allow me to scroll instead of paginating everything because I, I can't actually change this I, I, this list is as long as I can go and I can't do anything with this um, so like I, I can't just tell it to allow selected anymore because this is the only thing I can actually select um, so I like I wish I could see what this item is for example but I can't see it and there's no way to make it smaller so this game needs scrolls. If you're going to do this to my list, right, then you need to allow me to scroll through the list. Um, so right now, this is all that's going to hold is copper and, and iron. Um, is there anything else? Maybe quartz should be processed. I don't know if is silicon processed this way too, probably. But I can't get there because it's an S. 
And uh, as far as I'm aware, this is in alphabetical order, and I can't get down there. So I'm just going to have to allow all. I don't really have a choice. But yeah, the game definitely needs scroll bars. Um, so that will be storage for, for that stuff specifically. And then they can just get in and out and do the thing they need to do. Yeah. Uh, so stock trading is done. I want to go... Uh, you know what? Let's just go right to insights. We need the we need the RAM to do that. But yeah, I think we'll take a quick break from from research just for now. So we can get our uh, get ourselves stable here real quick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a vent to this wall there to allow the heat to pass through on this side too, because this is a big heater. So I should see heat starting to come through here. This should start getting more comfortable in this place. And then, um, you know, obviously this, we don't need heaters in these areas. These units are gonna produce heat all on their own. What will be a trick here is to get enough radiators to control the heat and make it comfortable. Um, and then when we need to get out, we just get out, right? So if there's a fire here or, you know, whatever, we'll have a teleporter in this room and that, that feeds, you know, into the panic room. Or I guess this is close enough to where they can just leave, but um, that's the general idea, though, is what we'd be doing. Uh, with the radar, consuming electricity. I think with the radar, I can use this to see the resources that are on the planet, but I have to be in orbit of that planet first, I think, is how that works. And I am currently going to lack probably microchips to build this. Oh, plastic for the communicator, right? Um, all right, ditch the communicator idea. Yeah, ditch that. But yeah, I'm starting this, okay? And then um, I want lights in the hallways too. So we're going to go with lit floors. And we'll say there's a light. Uh, let's say there's a light uh, there, there, and in the middle there just to light this hallway. So that looks like every one, two light, one, two, three light. That's not how we want to do this. Oh, it's this one. Yeah. So one, two, three light, one, two, three light, one, two, three light. And then up on top of this part, we'll go one, two, three light. Just kind of keep them equidistant from each other like that to light this whole corridor. Um, what are you connected to? Do you need to be connected to anything? Um, I think I can move you. We'll relocate this to, let's say, this point here. You should be able to stay connected to pretty much everything by moving you there, I think. I'm not entirely sure why that wall exists. So I can get rid of that wall, too. Um, and then I also think probably we put in one of these wall sockets... Uh, nah, we can do floor connectors here, or just um one of the one of the bigger ones. We can do like um one of these connectors right on the outside of this, and then just have this be connecting like lights in the. I'm looking for something that just generically connects to lights to keep all the lights on. We'll just put it right on the edge of this uh, wall here, and then connect it to that, and then everything can just kind of flow that way. But you can go there, and then you can go there, and then you can connect to the light. To the light to the light like that so again we're kind of lighting this shit up all right <laughs> making this making this place able to be seen from every distance getting close to a mega jenner i'm debating on putting more engines on um but you notice like they're not even running all the time but i am debating on putting more engines on i think um i'm gonna try to build more batteries first if I can find lithium. Let's go ahead and see about maybe getting, I wonder if an ore trader is what we need, right? Or maybe an alloy trader. I think lithium should be an ore. It's not an alloy. So I'm gonna try ore trader and see if I can buy lithium from somebody. And then we can process that hopefully. Um, and then you're not configured. So I'm gonna have transistors here, microchips here, Transistors here. We'll stop producing transistors there. Go back to copper wire there. And then you, this one, will be configured to create 
Uh, we'll say battery cells, although you're not going to be able to do that until you have lithium. Battery malfunction. Uh-oh. Wait, is this going to start a fire? Um, battery malfunction. Instantly discharged. Okay, so that's not the one that starts a fire then. That's just the emergency mode thing. Fair enough. Uh, okay, so yeah, I've got, you know, stations being, cooking stations being idle and all that. That's just because it's reached its quota, pretty sure. Um, we want it to get to cooking up to the desired amount. So I can go to 40 now on that if I want to. And then on the survival mills, we'll go to 30. There we go. Seems good, man. This might end up being the bridge. But I'm pretty sure I want it to be this. A little like we want to, I want to round this off and then have like an area outwards too. But we have now reached our next planet. We've also found the ore trader. So, um, given that we have reached our next planet, we're not going to be, you know, thrusting all that much. We're not going to be, you know, um, moving with our engines right now. I think what I'll do is I'm going to go in and see about getting security which is over here. Yeah, I think I want to get security going just in case, right? Um, this does, this is going to extinguish fire. Um, maybe instead of separating the rooms, I simply put these things in a room with a fluid cannon. That's an option too, but I want to get to energy weapons. I want to get to the directional turrets. And uh, I want to be able to defend myself, basically. Uh, and then there is nuclear energy later, too, which has a megawatt, which is crazy. But I don't have uranium, so I need to find uranium as well. Are we still traveling? The game has not told me that we've reached our destination yet. So maybe I just missed it. No, we haven't. We're, we're very close, though. There we go. We had now arrived. Okay. So, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try to use this radar if possible. Uh, if to do that, let's maybe, maybe it already has it because we have the radar. So if I say enter planet, can I, just no Intel. So build a radar and use the scan action on the space object to get information. Okay. So I would then go, uh, over to the map, click the object and then go scan. Okay. This says coal, copper, iron, and rock. Okay, so can I do this without being in orbit of this thing? So I, I have copper, which is great. We want to go down and do that. Um, but let's say I wanted to go here next. Can I, is it, is it possible for me to, yeah. So I, I think I have to be close enough to that. Okay, but I, at least I know what's down there now, right? So because I know what's down there, I don't need to waste my time with rock, for example. Um, I can instead start the expedition get the people going and then I can tell them specifically to focus on copper and let's say coal. I have enough iron too, I think, but whatever we can have them do all three. It's fine. Um, there's a limited amount of those resources. So I'm just going to have them go down to the surface and, um, and make that happen. So off they go. Goodbye. And they'll go up and get copper, which is going to be great for trading with this ore trader, which again, hopefully has some lithium that I can use to advance. Cause right now I'm kind of stuck and I can't build the things I want to build, which is a little bit of a problem. Um, I think we'll go ahead and just, even though it's really far away, we're going to go ahead and get this stuff actually running. And if I take a look at the temperatures in here, it's going to start, I think getting warmer. Yeah, pretty fast, it starts to get warmer. And so we need a way to vent that out. And uh, I think there's really no other way to do that instead of just opening this up is the only way I'm gonna be able to control that. Yeah, so it does look like this stuff definitely is gonna be served better by being exposed to space. So I probably, until I have radiators, which, can I build that yet? I don't know where that would be. How about we try this? <laughs> Radiator. Cools down. What does it say? Cools down the surroundings. Within a small radius. Place radiators in enclosed areas. Yeah, so I can place a radiator there. And uh, honestly, placing it around, that would be better, wouldn't it? Okay, I, I think I want to redo this now. Yeah. Um... We're going to put the door. Oh, 
one, two, over. I think we're gonna put the door here instead, like that. And then this is gonna end up just being a wall again. Um, by doing that, I can get the um, the radiators to be in the back and in the front of these two furnaces. Probably a good idea. This one's configured to do iron. We're going to have this one configured to do copper. Actually, we only have 11 titanium. I can do copper. It's fine. Uh, so we'll be able to have both resources being made in here at least. And see CJ, he's in here, but he's in a suit. I, I, again, I think it would be okay. I would hope anyway, it would be a nice idea to be able to allow people to get through here and to move through here uh, without needing to be in a suit. That's the dream. I don't know if I can actually make that happen or not. Uh, I want to copy this floor and replace these two. And then I also want to copy the floor vent and move it to uh, in the middle of the, the whole place. So just line it up with the doors. So they should swap this stuff out now. We should have two reinforced floors here and two of the floor tiles there. Yeah. And then same thing. We're gonna build a copy of this reinforced floor over top of the lights. And then I also wanna pick the lit floor, copy, and then place that right above the floor vent. And there we go. And then let's we'll keep an eye on the temperatures, make sure it's not gonna to be too hot. It is definitely getting too hot. So we're gonna to want to go ahead and open that up. Open. And then let's make sure that uh, you know, we're letting that vent because it's way too hot, right? We don't want this to be super warm. An enclosed space like this, it's terrible. That's why we've got the floor vents to help with that. All right, good. Now, the next thing is to move them. So I want to relocate you to here and relocate you to here. Now, that might create a situation where they can't actually get back to this. So I'm actually going to move this temporarily over here. And um, that way we can get around this stuff and and get going where we need to go with it. Looks like my shuttle just took off in front of me. Yeah. So they already brought back stuff. That was a really, really fast mining trip. Uh, very nice. Uh, so they can move all the stuff, out, the stuff out of here. And then what I can do, I still don't know where it's located. So we're just going to tab uh, radiator, we'll put one there, there, uh, and then we'll put one in front of it too. So it'll end up being right where it is. And then there and there will be the other radiators. So once these are built, we'll get those built first. They should be pretty straightforward to build. Yeah, they're just, I mean, radiators are not that sophisticated. So unfortunately that one's just out of reach. So I'm gonna have to use a different connection point for that. Here we go. Radiator, radiator, oops, here we go. Radiator and radiator, good. And then you're connected now. And then I want you to be moved back to this position where you, wow. Stop clicking it too many times there. So these are, these are perfectly positioned now to where they can be effective. And I want to see if the radiators matter. So if I close this vent, what happens to the temperatures? Is it okay? I'm thinking it's probably not good enough. The radiator is not very effective. So this is just a lot of heat. I think there is no chance we make this work in this room. No, there is no chance this works. Very unfortunate. Um, unless, of course, the radiators kick in. Ooh. Maybe the radiators kick in at a certain temperature. Hang on. Cools down the surroundings in the small radius. Place radiators in enclosed areas near your industrial equipment. Multiple radiators will cool area faster. Has no effect outdoors. I think it does work. It does. The radiators, they kick in after a certain temperature. So they're they're ineffective until it gets to like 21C. And now it's actually pretty comfortable. We're keeping it at 21. That's nice. All right, good. Now there's no oxygen in here, of course. But we're going to eventually get that, you know. Our oxygen needs to happen eventually, too. So um, we'll go in and get the vents. Uh, and I'll just place that vent uh, like that. And then I'll do the same thing on that door. This door was also shifted over too. So whatever we end up processing on this side will work that way too. 
I'm considering having a door on this side too, but our furnace room, huh? It's a, it's a furnace room with radiators to cool it down and it does seem to be working. All right, cool, good. Richard joined our colony. Hello, Richard. Richard the cleaning bot. That must have been our last battery pack. Uh, speaking of last packs, uh, we have a uh, merchant here that is here. It's Jack Grant. And uh, they have titanium. They have carbon. They, they have titanium. They don't have lithium. I can buy the titanium, though, I think. Uh, I want to say I don't have... At 249 on the titanium plate. I could potentially buy some of that. Is lithium considered an alloy? I don't know chemistry, so I just figured lithium is not an alloy. It doesn't sound like an alloy to me. I'm just trying to think of like, you know, how it's like extracted and everything, and it doesn't sound like that's an alloy. So maybe it's not an alloy, but then, you know, it's just that this guy doesn't happen to have it, which I was kind of hoping he would. Um, Buying uranium doesn't seem like a good idea, but now that I'm able to trade stocks, interesting. What if I go to uranium and you see how it's kind of started to teeter down a little bit? Um, Star creds miner. Hey, it's going to start getting more positive, huh? Get more popular. Maybe I'll, um, current price, CFD. Contract for differences is an arrangement made in financial derivatives trading where the differences in the settlement between the open and closing trade prices are cash settled. There is no delivery of physical goods or security with CFDs. Okay, so I just simply buy and I can choose how many to buy. In this case, I can only buy five. Uh, I can't buy any. Really? No, I just, I just did. I have five of them. My shares. Cost basis is 11.65, average price at 2.33. I like how they're putting that stuff in there. And so I can see how this works. This is my break even, is the, uh, my average price is this yellow line. So we'll see how this works. Maybe the Star Creds Miner will uh, go up and it sh also shows it in a different color down here, which is cool. My wallet uh, has only 1.77 left. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so anyway, this guy doesn't have what I want. Sadly, um, I might, I think I'm going to go ahead and get another one. So as he leaves, I'm going to go ahead and try to contact another one just to see if I can maybe get a different ore trader that could have what I'm looking for. So I'll, I'll try to contact a different one. Um, I'm actually curious if you can be configured to collect something other than water or lithium. Boom. You can collect lithium. I'm going to have you do that. There you go. So this thing will collect lithium from space. All right, I need to get more of these things, these particle collectors. So uh, if I can figure out how to build these, that'd be sweet. I will see. Anyway, guys, this is gonna be the end for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you. If you like the video, that would be very helpful. I hope you consider subscribing as well because that's gonna be very helpful as well. Um, we have some more planters that are online now and I can go in and get them configured to be coffee trees on this side, I think is what I was gonna do. Yep, and then over on this side was gonna be the wheat, because um, eventually we're gonna start making flour and bread and things like that, so uh, I wanna get that stuff going, but. So more plant fibers for us there too. Okay, that's it. We're gonna have lithium from that particle thing, all right? <laughs> Take care, we'll see ya, bye-bye.